We are on our way on a road trip vacation and I'm gonna show you how to stay keto or carnivore while you're traveling. Now for this trip, we're pretty much gonna be staying local. We're actually gonna be hitting three different spots and within each spot, it'll be kind of like a different style of eating. So it, this will give you a wide range of options you can choose from when you're either vacationing or eating out or camping. So our first stop we're gonna go to is Hood River, Oregon, and we're staying at a hotel there. So it's just gonna be a lot of eating out. And next we're staying at a forest service cabin out in Eastern Oregon. So that's gonna be more like camping style. We will be in a cabin, so I guess there's like a stove top and an oven, and there's also a grill outside. Um, but we're gonna be going grocery shopping before we go and just pick some items that are really really easy to make these are just similar items that you could make while you're keto camping too and our last stop we're heading over to Idaho we rented a house on Payette Lake so we're gonna be in McCall Idaho and we're gonna have a full access to a kitchen so we'll be grocery shopping beforehand so getting a lot of keto and carnivore like-minded foods and we'll probably eat out a couple of times there's some some really good seafood and steak restaurants in town as well. First, I wanna share with you guys some snacks that we like to take on the road. These are non-perishable snack items. They make good for either a meal replacement or you can just eat them as you go to if you get hungry. mix of like carnivore items since we are trying to do the carnivore diet right now and some keto items too if you're just straight keto. The first item that we always bring is jerky and this is one of my favorite brands. It's called Chomps. We like these because they're pretty much all just beef and like a few a little bit of seasonings. But there's no sugar added. It's zero carbs. It has a good fat and protein ratio too and they're really really good. But um, I love these. Also Tillamook has a beef stick too that they just came out with that's zero sugar we like to get those i'll probably get a package of those too um, for our trip but yeah there's no added sugars it's just beef and then some seasonings and they're really really good another option is hard-boiled eggs um, so these are of course perishable um, you're supposed to keep them refrigerated, but they're okay at room temperature just for the day. Or if you have a little mini cooler that you like to take with you when you're traveling, these are great. They'll just fit inside there. Um, I also like to bring a little bit of salt with me just because I like salt on my hard boiled eggs. But the kids love these. We like them too. Again, it's just a really quick snack option or meal option when you're on the go. And another road trip snack would be cheese. And you could use whatever kind of cheese you want to. This cheese, uh, somebody sent to me it's by Sa Sack Sack Sach I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong but this um, you can actually it says that it doesn't melt so this I feel like would be really good on a road trip so you don't have to worry about it melting or keeping it cool um, so I usually like my cheese like warmer at room temperature it brings out the flavor a little bit more but they have a couple of different flavors like this is their original one and then this is a spicy habanero so I'm gonna bring both of these with us and another option that's great on the go is bone broth so I've mentioned these before these are by bare bones broth and they have their little individual travel size bone broth packet so it's good you could just add some hot water so you could stop at a gas station fill up um, a cup with some hot water and then add one of these and you can sip on that as you're driving and I'll have a link down below on where you can purchase these now for a non carnivore option one of my favorite foods to take with us when we're traveling is a nut butter so this is by yum butter they have a bunch of different flavors this is um, macadamia nuts in here um, so it's like 20 grams of fat um in one serving the whole package is 61 grams of fat so this would be an entire meal for you and then the next thing that i recommend you bring is actually in this big box we just got this shipped to us the other day it finally came in the mail um this is god how many did we order i think it's like 48 packages of pork rinds and we get these from amazon um we actually paid for these with our own money um, this video is not sponsored by anybody. These are just products that I love. 
Um, but anyway, so this is one of our favorite brands. I mean, I love all types of brands of pork rinds. You can't go wrong with a pork rind. Um, but this one, they're really, really unique with their different flavor combinations. So it's by Pork King Good. And they have salted butter. We like the salt and vinegar ones. And then they have, let's see if I can find it. It's at the bottom. Oh, this one. This one right here. So this is their white cheddar flavor, and I swear it tastes like I'm eating popcorn. Now that we have all of our keto carnivore road trip snacks packed, it's time to hit the road. First stop is Hood River, Oregon. My first tip for staying keto while on vacation is when you're eating out, make sure you scan the menu ahead of time. Just look and see if it's even a restaurant that you could find options for that you could eat. Um, some restaurants aren't going to have keto or carnivore options, so look up ahead of time and see if there is something on the menu that you could have. Unfortunately, our first night there, we didn't do this, and so we ate at the restaurant at the hotel, and I ordered this trout and didn't realize that it was coated in flour before it was fried. So, but fortunately, I was able just to just kind of pick off that outer crust and eat um, the inside, which was absolutely delicious and filled me up. The next day I used the Starbucks that was in our hotel parking lot and I got myself a coffee in the morning. And I usually just get an Americano with some cream in it. You do have to be careful when it comes to Starbucks because a lot of times they'll add a little bit too much heavy cream. It's very easy to stay keto or carnivore when it comes to eating breakfast. There's always gonna be something on the menu that you can have like eggs, bacon, omelets are okay as well. Just make sure you tell them to hold the hash rounds, the toast, and no pancakes. While we were in Hood River, we rode on a stern boat on the Columbia River, which I highly recommend if you're ever in the area. It was a fantastic ride and beautiful views. And I found my new water sport. We noticed a bunch of kayakers floating alongside our boat. And what they would do was get right beside it and then jump into the wake that we would make from the stern. It looked like so much fun. And it didn't really look like it was maybe that hard, although it probably is. For lunch, we ate along the river and we both ordered a cheeseburger salad, which brings me to my next tip. When it comes to ordering lunch, you could just stick with salads. The majority of them are keto as long as they don't have fried foods or croutons. Just ask them to hold the croutons. You could also ask for extra meat too, just to keep you a little bit full longer. After lunch, we went down to a different portion of the river and watched some of the kite borders. And then we also found some blackberries growing along on the side of the road, which we picked and enjoyed that as a fun little dessert. When choosing the type of restaurant to eat out at night, you really can't go wrong with a steakhouse. It's easy to stay carnivore or keto when you just stick with steak. Also, make sure you tell them to hold the sides, so no potatoes or rice, and oftentimes they'll just ask if you want more grilled vegetables or even a salad. Just remember to tell them to hold the croutons and stick with dressings like ranch dressing, blue cheese, or Caesar. Or you could just do oil and vinegar. At 
At some restaurants like this one at Celilo, you can often find appetizers that are keto or carnivore friendly. They have this delicious pickled vegetable dish. It actually had pickled blueberries in it too and radishes and mushrooms. It was so good. They also had pork belly with a cabbage cilantro slaw and a poached egg. And then we also found a lot of seafood, like some clams and mussels just steamed in butter. I want to try it. Eat it. Golding. It's not bad. It's good. day two right now of our vacation we're still in hood river and i got some breakfast which is starbucks again we actually might head to the hotel though i was we were thinking of just like not eating until dinner time um but we have a coupon that we need to use up for breakfast at the hotel so we might head there and get some breakfast there and um there wasn't really much that we could eat on the menu um but hopefully they could do some a la carte like i did yesterday and just get some maybe some eggs and some sausage we decided there wasn't anything on the menu for us, so we headed to a traditional breakfast place, and my husband got an omelet. Like I said, omelets are a great choice, but what I like to do when I go out for breakfast is to order a la carte. So this is a great way to stay carnivore or keto, just order a side of bacon, a side of eggs, and some sausage, and oftentimes it's less expensive to order like that too. Hood River was tons of fun. I highly recommend you guys come check out this little gem in Oregon. It's along the Columbia River Gorge. Lots of stuff to do. Lots of stuff to see. As you can see, we didn't even do everything that we wanted to do. Um, I think next time I come, we're going to do some whitewater rafting, maybe try some kite surfing because it didn't look like that's that hard. I mean, we already know how to wake surf, so um, this looks like it would be pretty easy too. And tons of really good restaurants and shops. We're on the second leg of our trip, so we're gonna head to a forest service cabin. We're gonna be there for, let's see, today until, I think we're gonna leave Thursday, um, but it's a little cabin. There's no electricity there. Um, it's just like an outhouse, um, just old forest service cabin that they rent out to people now. So we're headed there. It's like around 8.30. I got my breakfast, which is my Starbucks. In this part of the trip, we're going to do a lot. We're going to stop at Safeway in Pendleton first and grab all of our groceries. So it'll be more like kind of camping based, um, just some homemade meals that you can make when you're outside of your own kitchen. We're limited to an oven and a stove top, and I think there's a grill outside. So it's really limited kitchen appliances, but we're just going to do some basic things like chicken or maybe not chicken, steak, taco salad, things like that. So um, we'll see you guys on the road. Luckily, this cabin comes equipped with a refrigerator, um, so you don't have to keep things in an ice chest. I'll show you what I have. Um, we decided that we're gonna make some tacos, have a taco salad probably tomorrow night. So we have some ground beef. We have pre-cooked bacon for the morning. We got some T-bone steaks. And then um, this was the lettuce for the taco salads. And so, I mean, you could just eat this if you were doing carnivore option, um, but we're gonna be eating some vegetables and just regular keto for dinner. So we picked up some of this stuff. This is um, bacon and cheese stuffed jalapeno poppers with some cream cheese, and then some stuffed mushrooms, and then a fajita mix for the taco night. And all of these too, if like we do have a stove and an oven in the cabin, um, but all of these can be 
you can put them in some foil and cook them over a campfire too, so they're a good campfire option. After our hike, we decided to prepare dinner, and so tonight's dinner we're having grilled steaks on the fire. Like I mentioned before, these are T-bone steaks, and we're just going to season them with a little bit of salt and pepper and then place them right on the grill. And this is over direct heat, so you really got to keep an eye on them so they don't cook for too long. And to go along with those steaks, we have our stuffed mushrooms that I just wrapped in some foil. And um, I cook these in the cabin oven, but you could cook them over the fire if you wanted to. After the steaks are done, we put a little slice of butter on each of them and just let the butter melt and dinner's ready. Now when it came to doing the dishes, there's no plumbing at this cabin, so we had to get water out of the creek nearby, and this is very, very clean water. As you can see, there's no particulates in there at all, so we just have to take it over with a bucket back to the cabin and boil up some water, and then I can wash dishes. The next morning I made some coffee and I had to boil some water and then use a coffee press. So I have a couple of scoops in a coffee press and the one I'm using, I'll have linked down below. This thing is awesome. It made the best coffee. It's super easy to use. Um, it's portable and easy to clean too. After fishing all day long with no success at the beautiful Anthony Lakes area, we had to make some dinner on our own because there was not going to be fish for dinner. So I, we made those taco salads that I told you about and I took that fajita mix and fried that up with some butter and then um, added the ground beef, cooked that up, and then we made our taco salads with a few simple toppings. The next day, it was time to say goodbye to the cabin in Eastern Oregon and head east over to Idaho. We finally got to McCall and arrived at our beautiful condo on the lake and unloaded our groceries. This house had a full kitchen, so we went to the grocery store and picked up some items. We mostly got items for just snacks taking with us when we're kind of out and about during the day. Um, this also services actually our lunch. Um, this is just like really easy portable stuff or just like if we're lounging around by the lake or poolside, we could eat this. And we also got a bunch of breakfast stuff because we we're going to make all of our breakfasts at the condo too. For lunch to take with us while we're out, I also picked up a pizza, some yogurt, and then some cheese. We rented a side-by-side -side for the day so we could drive around into the Idaho mountains and then have lunch at one of the lakes.
We're getting ready to go out to dinner tonight. I know it seems like we're eating out a lot and I thought maybe we'd prepare more meals on this leg of our trip since we're renting a house and we have access to a full kitchen. Um, but it's not turning out that way and mostly because it's like our full days have been packed with lots of stuff. And so we get home and the last thing I wanna do is cook. Um, especially since I cook part time for a living with my YouTube channel and my website. So um, we've actually just been going out to eat and there's a lot of great restaurants here in McCall. If you do choose to eat out and you're in a very popular destination like McCall, I highly recommend making reservations ahead of time. That way you can get into the restaurants that you want to get into because there's so many great restaurants here in McCall. I have a confession to make. I went off the keto diet last night. I had ice cream. It said it was sugar-free in my defense and I don't think it was. I don't think it was keto. I think it had a lot of carbs in it because I got really tired afterwards and my stomach hurt. So lesson learned, sugar-free does not always mean that it's keto, but that's fine. Tomorrow's a new day or today's a new day and we're gonna get back on track. Overall, we had an amazing vacation. We were able to stay keto and somewhat carnivore throughout. I hope you find these tips helpful for the next time you're on vacation and wanna stay keto.